Hello! Happy Tuesday Night Live. <clears throat> it is Tuesday night, um, July the 5th. Uh, the beginning of the summer has, well, I, I don't know, I always think of the beginning of the summer as actually July 4th, but technically I guess it's back in June. Anyway, welcome, welcome to Tuesday Night Live. Welcome, Melanie. Um, my name is Betty Sakosha. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I have been with Stampin' Up! for like 21 years a long time. I'm also the team leader of the Power Positive inking team and here on most Tuesday nights, not all Tuesday nights and the time varies but I aim for around seven o'clock. So um, if this is something that you enjoy watching, tune in every Tuesday night. All right, I'm gonna get started tonight with a project, um, with a very simple project, with a very simple stamp set. Um, and then I'm gonna switch it up and show you how you can make it more complicated, if you so choose. Um, and talk to you about some specials going on now. So let me flip you over. Oh, my desk, my feet, those are my feet. Um, let me flip you, or move you down, I think that's the word, not flip you down. Already flipped you. Okay. So, let me get this stuff out of the way and talk to you about what's going on. So, Stampin' Up! Um, we just began with our brand new um, uh, July to December catalog. Looks like this. Yours might not come with these things on, but you certainly can add them. Um, it started July 1st and runs through December of 2022. So if you have not received this in the mail and you are a customer of mine, certainly reach out to me and I will make sure that you get it. If you don't have a demonstrator yet and are looking for it, reach out to me and I'd be happy to get that for you. Um, but if you do have another demonstrator, please reach out to him or her and um, tell them that you are looking for the July to December 2022 catalog. In the olden days, we called it the holiday catalog, kind of for obvious reasons. It runs through a lot of fall and winter holidays. Um, but now we have renamed it July to December. But the best news of all is that in the same package with that, you will also receive this celebration catalog. And this runs from July 1st through August 31st. And so the, the beauty of this is that for every $50 you spend either in the big catalog, we call that the annual catalog that looks like this, or the mini catalog or the combination of the two for every $50 you spend, you will get to pick a freebie from here. And if you spend $100, you get to pick a different freebie from here. Um, so this is running right now. And reach out to your demonstrator if you need a hostess code and they will let you know what to use. And if you spend $150, then you are your own host, which allows you some extra goodies. So if you host right now, you will, um, uh, 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 hang on, <laughs> if you place, if your party is over $300, you receive the pomegranate set for free. Um, that is free for hostess if your party is over $300. And if you want to join right now, you get this beautiful um, planner that I do not, currently owned so I cannot show it to you but I've seen a lot of people um, posting theirs online and it's really really sweet so you get the planner and a stamp set and um, some notepads with it so if that is of interest to you it's just $99 to start you choose $150 of product excuse me $125 of products you love in the catalog and then you get all this for free okay all that said my goodies have not yet arrived. So um, they will be here tomorrow. So there will be more, definitely more to come on, on the celebration um, front and the mini catalog front. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you something that is in the annual catalog. And that is the Simply Fabulous stamp set. So um, you can find that in your current annual catalog on page 41 and it is pretty 
I want to say pretty basic. That's kind of what drew me to it, was that it was pretty basic. And I thought, this is a great beginner stamp set because it's got a lot of great words in here. Let's celebrate. So obviously you can use that for anything, but think birthdays or just fun. It's got a thank you in here, just saying hello. And then some other things like, hey, hooray, a note for you. And there is beauty in everything, and you are simply fabulous. I really like the fonts in this, and I think you are going to like how fresh and great it looks. So if you are new to stamping, this is certainly a fantastic stamp set to have. But if you are old to stamping, um, I'm going to show you some other tricks that you can do with it. So the stamp set itself is only $18. It's very, very affordable. Okay, so here's my stamp set. Um, last week... I showed you, I think it was last week, maybe the week before, I was showing you how to use the Stamparatus to line up um, a variety of images, three in a row, three in a row, three in a row, words in the middle. And this is one stamp set that I showed you in the end, was a card that I made with it. And that was from the Simply Fabulous stamp set. So I'm going to show you a very, very um, quick and easy um, card that you could do. A beginner stamper certainly could do this card. Um, or an experienced stamper who wants to do things quickly. All right, so let me grab my goods, and I'll show you what I'm doing with this. Okay, I wanted to use some DSP. DSP means designer series paper, and Stampin' Up! has a lot of designer series paper. Some is very elegant, some has some specialty stuff, like it's shiny or metallic-y or... I don't know, lots of other things that can make it very special. But this is some pretty basic but very, very handy paper to have. And this is our 6x6 six six paper that comes with each, each color family has its own 6x6 six six paper that is the same. Um, and the colors match whatever the color family is. So these are the new in colors for this year. Um, so we've got Starry Sky, Parakeet Party, Sweet Sorbet, Tahitian Tide, um, and Orchid Oasis, which I think this is Orchid Oasis, and this is Starry Sky. So you can see all those colors there, and I decided that I was going to use Parakeet Party for this one. No, I didn't. <laughs> this is totally... Oh, my goodness me, Betty. This is the second card I was going to show you. That's rewinding. I have rewound, and now I'm going to show you some different DSP. Okay, this is the, uh, what's this called? This is called Tea Boutique, also 6x6 six six paper that comes in some really fun patterns. So one side, you can see, is pretty busy. That's not the busy side. Here is the busy side. You can see these sides are pretty busy. Lots going on, lots of fun on these sides. Um, but then on the other side... So here's the rest of the busy side. Very tea themed. Um, fits fits the fits the suite quite nicely. Um, but then on the opposite side is what I wanted to show you is the very very kind of um, fun but more neutrally kind of side. Whoops, that's the busy side. Flip you right over. Okay, so this is the pack of paper that I have chosen to use, and I'm using this gingham that is in. Um, petal pink. So I have chosen to use that and I'm going to pair it with some sweet sorbet. So petal pink, sweet sorbet, and pear pizzazz. And I'm going to use um, three of the images from this and put together a really, really quick card. Okay. Once you have, oh, before we get started, um, this is a photopolymer stamp set, so it definitely works best if you use a pad underneath it. So for my pad, I'm using a paper piercing, paper piercing pad. You could use a mouse pad, you could use a magazine, you could use your catalog. Anything that's going to give a little squish to your image, uh, to your stamp, will be helpful. I have covered this with some um, grid paper just to protect it because I'm going to do a random pattern which is going to stamp all over on this and off the edges and I just don't want to make a mess. Look at I have already made a mess. That looks like a, a tragic accident, doesn't it? It's not. It's just 
just sweet sorbet, inky fingers. Okay, but the paper has another side, so that's the side we'll use. Okay, so I'm going to use this flower image. Oh, I was going to tell you, the best thing that I have found when using um, the photopolymer stamp sets, if I have a really juicy pad, you're going to get a better image if you take your ink and squish it back into the pad. So tonight I'm just using a little um, plastic spoon. You can use an old gift card, anything like that, just to, to push the ink back in and you're gonna get a better image. So that was image number one, not bad, but watch image number two. <gasps> better, a little crisper, right? Okay, so I'm going to randomly stamp my flower everywhere all over this paper kind of looks like if you live through the 80s does it look like a little pac-man sort of if you didn't live through the 80s you have no idea what i'm talking about google it later you'll be amused you'll be amused at our entertainment in the 1980s okay um let me just clean off my stamp and let me warn you that once you have used a um, any kind of red or purpley ink on your stamp, it will be permanently stained, which is actually handy because it makes it less, makes it easier to actually find your stamp. Because <laughs> let's just say that sometimes photopolymer see through stamps can be lost. Okay, so this color I'm using is the um, uh, petal pink, and that is just going to go on the inside so that is it's like a two-step stamp let me see if i can zoom you in here so you can watch what i'm doing um so i'm just going to go all around and fill that in and it's a really this stamp set is a very um forgiving stamp set because it's kind of just like a fun fun look to it so if you're not exactly where you belong it's forgiven squish that over there there we go I told you I was going off the edge which is why I have my graph paper underneath Ooh, did you see that there's a blotch that's because there's ink can you see the ink that's on the side of here um, if I was smart I would be using a smaller smaller block and I have a smaller block so I definitely should be using it the smaller the block you use if it fits your stamp better you will have less of that kind of issue going on. And so if you got the block, use it. But don't worry about that because I'll find a way to cover it up. As I mentioned, I've been doing this for 21 years, so I have covered up a lot of mistakes. Okay, so there's that all over there. And then the next thing I'm going to do, in fact, I'm going to switch because I'm gonna put some leaves on here, but they are also small, and I'm gonna put them on a small block so as not to make another mistake. Okay, and I'm using pear pizzazz for my green. This will be my leaves, and I will throw those right underneath all of my flowers. And this is a really, like, um, Oh, it's a really fun color combo. It's really bright, very summery. Loving it. Um, and then I'm going to throw in a couple. I can see, like, this poor guy's not going to have a leaf here because that guy's got a leaf there, but hmm, I'm not worried. I'm going to throw a couple of leaves in there on the outside as if that's where flowers were coming from, just to give it a to kind of fill it in. Okay. Um, I think one more thing I'm going to do, this set comes with this tiny little circle, which you can use. I'll show you how I used it here. In this case, I used it kind of as the center of my flower. Here, I'm just gonna use it as a tiny little circle just to kind of fill in some spots. And that can also help me to cover up mistake that I had here. So let me close that. I'm going to open my petal pink again. Oops. <laughs> I am a mess tonight. I have ink everywhere. 
inky, inky fingers everywhere. Hello, Jody. I see that you tuned in. Okay, so I'm going to go back. See that mistake that I have? I can cover it up. I have a plan to cover it up, but I'm going to try this first. And that is, can barely tell, right? When all is said and done, you're not really going to notice that. So this is just a little, adding a little bit of extra something, something all over the place. It comes in the set. Why not? Right? Um, okay, I think that's good. Uh, maybe one more over here. Okay, now it's good. Now I'm stopping. Okay. So, that's my main card. My hands, while they look like they were tragically, uh, they were in an accident. It was only a stampin' accident, and they are now dry, and I'm ready to move on. So the paper that I'm using as my background will be petal pink. Any color that you are using for your actual image will work as a background. It's the beauty of stampin' up paper is that all of our paper coordinates. So this petal pink matches the, or coordinates with this petal pink here and coordinates with this petal pink that's on my DSP. So I am going to use my trusty green glue. Um, I like to use glue for this part because it gives, it gives you some leeway um, in putting something, putting your, Im put, putting your main image on here. It gives you um, if it's not quite straight, it gives you a little time. If it's not exactly where you like it, it gives it a little time. But then when you've decided that's where it goes, it stays put. So in my opinion, it's kind of the best of all worlds. All right, so I'm eyeballing this. It looks about a half an inch on each side. But I didn't use a big piece of DSP behind it because I didn't want to waste it because I really like it and I want to use it for something else. So I put about a half an inch on each side. I know that will make some of you crazy. So if it matters to you, let me show you what you can do. If it matters to you, you know who you are, right? Um, so this grid paper along the top here, you could line it up exactly at a half an inch. Except the problem is <laughs> this side is already kind of glued down. That's all right. That's all right. This is the what the back of a card looks like. Not pretty, right? But have no fear. Got to fix it right up. Okay, I'm going to put some more green glue on here. Now that I've showed you the trick so that you can get it right exactly at a half an inch. That will make your eye happy, your heart happy. Some people are not happy unless things are straight, and I, I get it, so. Okay, so now it is straight. Let me unzoom you here so you can see where I'm at. Okay, so this is going to go on my card base. So this, if you are just tuning in now, I'm just showing a really simple card made using the Simply Fabulous stamp set. That looks pretty good there. Give that a second to adhere down. And now I'm going to put some words on it. So I'll use my, um, I'm going to use the um, Just Saying Hello. This font is so fun. It is just, it just screams happy, doesn't it? All right, just saying hello. I have used I have used it in red before, or a version of red, so it is permanently stained, but that is okay. And hopefully this will be straightish. Just saying hello, pretty straight. Okay, let's close that. Give this some glue, and the card is nearly done. Okay, I'm gonna put this on dimensionals just to pop this up and put it on there. And I think you could um, bring some joy by mailing them this card because it looks uh, bright, looks fun. And who doesn't want a card that says just saying hello? 
something that doesn't say, here's a bill to pay, here's an ad for you, just saying hello. I think I'm going to put it down here. I could put it up here, but I think I'm going to put it down here. Okay, done. All right, so let me bring in another sample using, um, it's the exact same card, but with different colors. This is where I began my, my journey with this here. And on the inside, I just did that. I didn't um, prep that for the inside of this one, but I will go back and, and do that with the same colors. So this was Old Olive Crushed Curry in Real Red. So really, really fun, bright, fantastic stamp set. I love it for something simple like that. So let me show you another other, a couple of other very simple ideas using nothing other than uh, paper inks and stamp. So here's another one. It says, let's celebrate. This is just using some of the, um, I don't know, leafy images that are on there. And then, oh, I did use a cutout. I apologize. Um, I told you I was just using paper and stamps. And actually, I used several other things with this one. So I used the cutout from the new... Um, hang on. From the new Stylish Shapes dies. So I used one of these um, labels here that fits Let's Celebrate perfectly in there. As well as I used an embossing folder with the uh, polka dots but another fun, bright card. And then this one only used, well, used a couple of accessories, but um, the same, basically just the images that are in there, along with some gingham ribbon and a little tiny butterfly in there. There's beauty in everything. So those are some really simple, simple cards that you could make with this stamp set. Now I'd like to show you something a little bit more complicated. And... For that, I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus. So let me get these parts out of the way and bring that in. Okay, so I've used the Stamparatus before. If you haven't seen those videos, you can go back and watch them. But I did use it actually just a couple of weeks ago um, on this card here. But we're going to use the Stamparatus in a different way today. And I haven't done this in quite a while, so I just wanted to show you another way to use your Stamparatus. And it involves using um, a template. So, for your template, um, actually, let me get rid of the Stamparatus for a second, and we're going to make the template first. So I'm going to use my grid paper for this, and I'm using some window sheets. So if you uh, have access to window sheets or acetate in some way, that's what you want to use. Stampin' Up! does sell window sheets. This is your um, code for them, 142314. And you get two 12 by 12 sheets per package. Now I have previously cut this at seven by seven. And I'm going to show you using my grid paper how I line this up and how I make the template. Alrighty, so I'm going to bring in, for this, I have a three inch square. I probably should have marked that ahead of time. I did not. I will do that right now. This is three inches. And this is four inches. Let me do this in another color so you, you'll be able to see why I'm doing this in another color in a minute. Ah, okay, four inches. And finally, this is four and three quarter inches. So these are just squares cut with my with my paper trimmer. And now I am going to take, so I have my seven by seven inch piece of acetate set up on my grid paper. I'm using, um, I'm actually using this, let me show you here. This starts at zero and goes all the way up to eight starts at zero and goes all the way up to eight on this side. But this side has a lot of Stampin' Up! stuff on it. So I'm actually going to just work on this side here. I think you'll be able to see what I'm doing if I use this over here. Okay, so I'm going to take my smallest square, which is my three-inch square, and I'm going to put this right in the middle of my 
seven inch acetate or window sheet piece. The way I'll know that it's right in the middle is because that's seven inches and this is three inches. So I should have two inches on each side and I can measure that right up here. This is two inches and two inches down, which puts it exactly in the middle of this paper. Then I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to trace right around the outside carefully because this is going to last me a lifetime or at least a while. So I want it to be nice and neat. Okay, so I have traced my square right in the middle of the paper and now I'm going to put it on an angle. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees like so and put it right in the center. The reason I can tell it's the center is because these grid lines here, I will line it right up with the grid line on both sides and then I will know it's exactly where it should be. Give me a second to put it exactly where it should be. Okay. So that on that line, no. okay, so that looks good. Now I'm going to trace again right around the outside. So I'm doing this all in the same color pen because I'm going to then do the exact same thing in a larger using my next size up. So I want to know that this is my three inch. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to bring in my four inch square and do the exact same thing. So my four inch square is going to be a half an inch over on each side. So it's going to be right there, which would be um, one and a half inches from either side and one and a half inches down. And up, I guess, from the bottom of the paper as well. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. And while this process is, not that it's time consuming, but you want to be pretty precise with this, but you are only going to do this once. And then you're going to keep it for a long time. So, okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move that up a half an inch there. And then just making sure that it lines up with my with my grid lines on either side up here at the bottom. Then I'll know it's straight. And then again, just do the outside. Alrighty. And then the very last, whoops. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> all of a sudden it was not looking like a, whatever. It's good. It's all good. Okay. And then the last one that I'm going to do is four and three quarters. And that one is a little, actually, I'm not going to do that now because we don't really need that right now. Um, I can show you a finished one later, but I won't take your time, take up your time to show you that, but I will show you with my finished one later. Um, so here is my template that I will now leave inside of my Stamparatus case. Okay, so let me unzoom you here and show you the next thing that we're going to do. All right, Stampin' Up! sells um, grid paper that fits in a Stamparatus. You certainly could cut your own paper if you wanted to, but they do have grid paper, which does have um, measurements on it, which is handy. So I'm sticking that right inside of my Stamparatus, sticking it right into the corner here. I'm also using my my foam mat because this is a photopolymer stamp set so uh, you need a little squish factor so Stampin' Up! provides you with this foam mat that you can use with your photopolymer stamps. I also cut just a small piece of fun foam and I use that in there as well so I basically have double the foam. Um, I like that you don't necessarily have to but it's the way I do it. Okay so now I'm going to take my um, my template and stick it over into the corner. I'm going to carefully grab my magnets, which are stored on the back side of my Stamparatus. And I cover mine with some painter's tape to make a little way to grab it, make it a little bit 
easier to wrap. <sighs> they um, are very strong magnets, and now they are stuck together. So give me a second to pull them apart here. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, let me grab my three-inch paper that I'm using for this. Now, I'm going to start. This is it's just three inch, so kind of ignore the blue. That was to show you how to make the template for it. But for for today's purpose, I'm using the um, the red piece. So that's the that this is the square that I'm following, and I'm going to start by going putting my paper into the square in a square position as opposed to a diamond position. You always want to start with a square position. And I will show you why in one second. Okay, so that's where my paper is going to sit. And I'm going to put my magnet along the bottom, not too close to each other so that they don't snap together again. All right, for this one, I'm going to start with, let's see, I'm going to start with this image here, which is like a little leaf. And I'm going to place it where I want it ultimately to be, which is right there. The reason I'm starting square and not rectangle is because, let me see if I can show you this. Right there is where I have placed my my image. If I were to start in the kind of the, the did I call it a rectangle? It's not a rectangle at all. Um, it's more of a diamond shape. If you start it there, you tend to put your image higher up. And then when you turn it, it ends up in a funny place. So, um you always want to start it in just the square position. If you do it wrong once, you will know, and then you that problem will be solved. You won't do it again. Okay, ask me how I know that. Okay, so I'm starting with it right there. That's where I want it to be. I'm going to push my um, plate down and pick the image up. And I'm going to start this one with... Um, where did I put all my ink? Uh, I'm going to start with Parakeet Party. I think that's the color I wanted to use. So let's start with Parakeet Party. And I'm going to ink. This is going to be hard for you. Let me see if I can. I want you to see what I'm doing, but I also want you to see how I'm inking it up. So this is where my image is. It's right here. And I'm just putting my pad upside down. At, in, in doing that, however, can you see all the green that I got on there? That is ultimately going to be an issue because that, if I do that, a lot of times it will get right onto my, um, right onto my magnet tape. And then when I move the image, it's going to get on there as well. So you just want to keep a, a cloth of some sort. I'm using my chamois. I have cut my chamois up so that it's easier to do with this, but I'm just using that to clean that little spot there. All right, so. Ooh, I did a lousy job of stamping that. Can you see that? <laughs> I cut right off there. Okay, so clearly I need to re-ink re that and do it again. So the beauty of a Stamparatus is I haven't moved this, so I can... In fact, go right back and re-stamp it. It should be exactly where I want it to be. So the image should now come out fine. Oh, much better. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is to move my magnets away, rotate this one position. So now I'm in the diamond shape position. Okay. And put my magnets back down ink this up again. If you have the ability to use a spot as opposed to a big ink, as opposed to a big ink, um, ink pad, um, uh, it's much neater, but I don't have spots in these colors. So I'm just going to do it this way. Okay. Then after I've done that, I'm going to turn it again. So I'm back in the square position and I'm just going to continue this all the way around. So Ink, ink, ink. Ooh. There's a lot of ink on my plate. Sorry about that. Rotate it. Ink, ink, ink again. This is a really juicy ink pad, too. 
I should have probably um, used my spoon to, to kind of squish the ink back into it. I didn't. It'll be okay, but if you find that your ink pads are too juicy and that you're having issues with them, that's the trick. Go back and just squish your ink pad, squish your ink back into your ink pad, and that will give you a crisper image. Alrighty, we're almost done. Can you see that I'm starting to form a wreath here? And so this is taking a very, very simple stamp set and making it <laughs> slightly more complicated, but a lot more useful, right? All right. And boom. Okay. Ooh, I don't like that last image, so I'm going to re-ink it. There you go. Okay, so now I have the outside of my wreath being formed. Now I'm going to change my image that's on here. I'm going to get rid of this leaf here, and I'm going to bring in um, these tiny leaves here. And so they have a little bit different look to them. I'm going to actually position them a little bit off so that they're kind of covering the where the, where these where the where the um, the stem this right here that comes off like that I kind of want to cover that because I don't love the look of that so I'm going to do this right here and we're just going to use a different color green so just like I did before I'm going to position it it is in it doesn't matter where it is now. Um, I probably should do this because I told you this the first time around, so I'll tell you again. Just position it in the square position. If you do that every time, you won't have you won't have any issues. It really matters the first time around, but since I told you that, it's a good habit to get into. Okay, so now I'm going to use. Um, let's see, green apple green. Before Parakeet Party came, Granny Apple Green was our go-to really bright green. And it's so funny that now Parakeet, now that Parakeet has come into our life, I feel like Granny Apple Green is not nearly so bright. <laughs> kind of like, I don't know. Kind of like you had a friend, then you met a better friend, and the first friend doesn't seem as good anymore. <laughs> I don't know where that analogy just came from. That was not kind or accurate. Because we love everybody for their own reason, right? And I, and I still love my Granny Apple Green. But man, I love me the parakeet party. Okay. Again, getting off that excess green because it's going to cause a problem if I don't. And if you're not pleased with how it's stamped, you have a chance to re-stamp it. And I bet the next time you'll be like, yes, that's exactly how I want it. Okay, this is the last layer I'm going to do of this. And then I'm going to kind of freehand it, if you will. You may be wondering, could you have done this all in one shot? Um, you could have, if you flipped your, if you flipped your plate around, which is actually kind of a, kind of a thing. Oh, Melanie said that she slipped and hit the angry face. <laughs> well, you could have said that about the comment I just made about having a better friend and all of a sudden you're like, oh, that first friend wasn't as nice. I was really kind of thinking of boyfriends in high school, like guys you thought were so cute and then you met a cuter guy and you're like, oh, that first guy isn't really so cute. That's sort of what I was thinking of there. Okay. All right, we're almost done. All right, a couple more times through here. And... Couple more wipes of the plate because there's a lot of green ink all over the place here. And one more ought to do it. So it's actually eight times you move it, but it really is not that difficult to do. Um, and I want you to keep this in mind as you start to think of fall cards because a lot of fall and, and winter cards 
have wreaths on them. So start to think of the different um, images that you have in some stamp sets and how you could make a wreath if you so chose. There's other things that you can make, things that kind of come out from the middle of the card, but certainly a wreath is, is an easy thing to make using this technique. And you can use a um, bigger, I'm going to show you when we finish, I um, have a couple of samples of some large, of, of the larger, using the what I did here with the blue, with the four inch square. Um, but I'll show you that in, in when we're finished. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with my Stamparatus now. I'm going to move that aside. And then I'm just going to bring in a couple of the small images that are in here. Um, the flower and the circle again. So let me grab the flower first. And I'm going to do this in the, um, well, it's a flower. We have a number of flowers here. But I'm going to do this in um, the sorbet. <laughs> The sorbet, where did it go? Oh, it's right here. Okay, sweet sorbet. And this, I'm just gonna kind of randomly put the flowers wherever I want. Whoops. There we go. This is um, a very bright, color combo. To me, it kind of, when I'm all done, I'll show you, but I think it kind of, to me, it sort of has a, like a little bit of a Hawaiian feel to it. I don't know where that's going to go. Okay, I'm going to stop with my flowers and add my random little dots. This is the thing that I used in my last card there just to add a little bit of color. I love these dots because they're perfect for doing that. Just to add a little bit. Um, they're also perfect for covering up when, you know, when things slip, you know how that can go. You can add a little bit of this in here and all is right with the world. All right, I'm going to do one more there. Okay, there we go. So there is your wreath made using... Um, the Simply Fabulous stamp set and the Stamparatus trick. And let me show you my finished card. So here is my finished image here. I really do feel like it kind of has a Hawaiian, I don't know, like a crown feel to it um, using these colors here. So I use the Thank You, which is also from the stamp set. And that goes with the um, these framelits that I showed you previously, the stylish shape framelits. So that was that. And then this paper I talked about previously, at the very beginning, I was talking about the um, designer series paper that comes um, with each color family. And this is what I chose for this was the parakeet party with some flowers on it because I feel like it kind of complements the stamp set nicely. So that's that. And then I will put a little um, four by four paper inside. This is a little fun fold here where it's cut at 11 inches by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half, which will give you this center portion here, and then at six and three quarters. So that this section here will be one and a quarter inches. And that's just glued down so that your image here or that your card opens up. It's called a book binding um, fold, so it opens up like that. All right, and I promised you that I would show you one made with the larger one. So this is the same stamp set, um, but this image is a little bit, this image I initially was four inches. When I was all finished with it, I just gave it a little bit, tr a little bit of trim around the outside so that it had a little bit more of this green showing up here. Um, this, I don't know, this has very Greek feeling to me because these remind me of olives because they're um, very, very dark. Well, I guess olives are black, but these are, um, uh, what do we call that green? Um, evening evergreen, that's what we call it. So two different, two different kinds of looks with that. And let me pull in all of my cards today made with the same stamp set. Okay, I've got the original... The OG, the one that I made a couple of weeks ago, and then 
these images here. And then finally, the, the other one that I made earlier this evening. So you can see that um, they all have a very, I think it's the font that draws me to the set the most of all, because it's a very fun, bright, I don't know, just fresh, fun looking, happy looking font that I really, really like. But um, there's a lot that you can do with this. I did not, you don't see any cards here that are really muted. I guess this one would be sort of the most muted, if you will. But you you could definitely get a more muted card. It's, um, you know, it's a fun set. But you could get a muted look out of it if you so choose. Okay, so let me flip you around and chat for a second. Okay, so that friends was my um simply fabulous stamp set and the many things that you can do with it i hope you enjoyed it um moving forward all of my celebration stuff is coming tomorrow so i definitely will have more things to show you the deal with the celebration catalog is that when things sell out they will be gone for good so what is generally recommended is if you are looking through this catalog and there are things that you really like, um, the stamp sets generally should be the things you order later in celebration. Like if I maybe, let me reverse that again. Um, you should order any dyes or paper that you find that you really like in here because those are the things that tend to sell out quicker. Um, can't say for sure but that's, that's where I would go. But there's a lot of fun things in here from hippos to hippo accessories, some really cute paper, um, some silver and gold paper, some more stamp sets. There's some really, really, really cool things in here. Um, there's a camper in here that you will be seeing a lot of coming, moving forward. Um, but this is active right now. So, um, if you are, um, if you're a customer of mine, you can reach out and I will give you the hostess code that you should be using. Um, if you have a different Stampin' Up! demonstrator, then reach out to her or him and find out if there's a hostess code you should be using or have a party of your own, party of one. No judgment. All right, so that's it for tonight. Please reach out to me if you have any questions at all. I'll be happy to help you out. I will see you next Tuesday night. Actually, I'll see you before Tuesday because my stuff is coming in tomorrow and I really want to show you some of the new things um, that are out and available right now. So um, stay tuned and more is to come. All right, thanks guys. Have a good night. Have a good week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.